the Babylon because Babylon is a picture of the whole earth, of all the nations of the world. It's Satan's kingdom, and we, uh, I know I always emphasize that, but that's because uh, we heard for years it's the church, even though, as we were learning, and, and the church did become part of Babylon, even as we were learning that, remember the teaching, you have to come out of Judah, and where were you to flee to in the book of Jeremiah? You had to go into captivity to Babylon. And how did Mr. Camping understand that or, or relate that? He understood it. Judah was the church. Babylon was the world. So even in that um, limited idea, we were already seeing Babylon as the world. And, and of course, there's many other verses that confirm it. They, it confirms that Babylon is the world. And, and notice that Babylon um, was not aware thou art found and also caught because thou hast striven against Jehovah. Okay, um, in verse 23 of Jeremiah 50, it said Babylon became a desolation. Now let's, let's go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. And we'll look at a parallel couple of verses to Mark 3 that we saw earlier. Matthew 12, uh, 24 and following. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom... Divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Okay, this word desolation is that word I mentioned earlier. It's Strong's number 2049 in the Greek. Found five times. Here in the context of uh, Satan being divided, the kingdom being divided, his kingdom. And uh, if it is divided against itself, it, uh, it's brought to desolation and shall not stand. And over in Luke 11, another parallel passage, it says in verse 17, But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom... Divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against the house falleth. So twice, the, the, um, the kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. That word, desolation, 2049. Now go to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 17 and... Uh, the, you know, the context again is mystery Babylon in verse 5. And, um, and, and then we read in um, verse 14. No, I'm sorry. Verse. I'll, I'll just read verse 16 where this word is found. in the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, thee shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So that's Babylon. They will make her desolate. And in chapter 18, verse 2, it says, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. And then in um, uh, uh, we, we see Babylon in view, verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And then in, um, in verse 17, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And the word naught is the word desolate, come to naught. That phrase is that word desolate. In one hour, that is at the completion of the great tribulation, Babylon is made desolate. And then... Um, verse 18, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, 
saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. So those three verses, 1 and 17 of Revelation and these two, tie with uh, Matthew 12, 24, 26, and Luke 11, verse 17. The only five times this word is used. And, and, and we're not surprised because we know Satan has been typified by the king of Babylon and his kingdom by Babylon. And we, we know historically, after 70 years, which typified the Great Tribulation, one hour, that Cyrus, a type of Christ, took the city by night, put to death the king of Babylon, and, and uh, what did he do to the kingdom of Babylon? He divided it. You can read that in Daniel chapter 5. The Medes and the Persians, one of the writing on the wall, I think it was Perez, um, thy kingdom is divided. And, and sorry, my, I, I hate when I remember things halfway. Daniel 5, 28, Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Actually, the name Persians is related to dividing. It's an div army that divides is really the idea. And, and so uh, the king of Babylon's put to death. His kingdom is taken, divided. Divided, which ties in with Mark 3 um, in those verses, 22, 26, somewhere in there, that um, the, house, the house is divided. The kingdom is divided. Satan is divided, which, by the way, shows that Satan is synonymous with house and kingdom. All, all three are divided. And, and, and so um, the, the kingdom, the house, and Satan are all one and the same. Which means when we see the division in the world, we're seeing division in the kingdom, we're seeing division in Satan, and that proves its fall. And, and, it, and also Satan's end. Because that's what Mark 3 says. That he has an end. The word end is used in Mark chapter 3. It's not used in these other verses. Um, now, let, let's turn also in Revelation. I just want to add a little bit more support to this. Revelation 16, verse 19 says, and the great city was divided into three parts. This word divided is a different word, but it, it, it still means to divide because it's using three parts. The great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God. There's another verse that, that's making equal the cities of the nations in Babylon. And it's Judgment Day again, and they're divided into three parts. Um, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And, and, and so this is God's plan. It's his program for Judgment Day. This is the evidence that we're continuing to see. Does anyone remember seeing the things going on in the world and the nations? Well, yeah, you can look back and we had a civil war. North against South. Can't get any more divided than that. Or you can look back, and of course, other countries have had civil wars. There's been other political divides. And yes, but, but not across all society. In every area. It's everywhere. It's in all nations. It's in all societies. And there, there, um, there's never been anything like this. The world typically, although of course full of uh, unregenerate people and, and desperately wicked, yet the world has had a love for its own. You know, that's what, that's what the Bible says. The world loves its own. And, and there's been, especially during the Great Tribulation period, a coming together in, in unison when Satan was loosed and, and the world was 
rejoicing over the death of the two witnesses and and they were they were getting their doctrine aligned that's why there was this spread in globalism this unification the the division in Europe for example is the European Union the word union with various member states they came together to form the union it prospered over the course of the great tribulation now division with Brexit in England and France and Italy and and all these various nations um, it's a fight again you know they're calling it nationalism but it's a, a fight against that unity of um, of forces that took place when when Satan was uh, in power and let's also go to uh, Jeremiah 51 Jeremiah chapter 51 and I'll read verse 8 so we see the context Babylon has suddenly fallen and destroyed how for her take balm for her pain if so be she may be healed and then down in verse 11 make bright the arrows gather the shields Jehovah has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes and, and the Medes and the Persians would be the dividers for his devices against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of Jehovah, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes for Jehovah has both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Prepare the ambushes. Does that uh, remind anyone of any other verse we read? I know we read a bunch, but remember back in 2 Chronicles 20? Set the ambushments. Set the ambushments. And here, concerning Babylon, prepare the ambushes. Uh, and and uh, Babylon is fallen. Uh, just one last thing. The Hebrew word translated fallen if we go to Joshua, the book of Joshua, and I think it's found a few times, but I'll just go to one verse. Joshua 23, verse 4. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea, westward. The word divided is the same word translated fallen in Jeremiah. Where Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And, and behold, I have divided unto you by lot. So God's using that very word that we know as it ties into the division of Satan's kingdom and his kingdom is Babylon to, to um, express the, the giving of the lot, which would be that e eternal inheritance we're all looking for in the new heaven and new earth, as we inherit the earth, which um, is currently occupied with the inhabitants of, of Satan's kingdom, the unsaved people of the earth. And, and so uh, God is, is going... In, in other words, it... It's part of God's plan to, uh, another reason for division is to, as it were, of course it's all spiritual, divide up the land to indicate it, its owner has been defeated, no longer possesses it, and then to give it to all those that he has saved for eternity future. Okay, we'll stop here and we'll take uh, just a couple minute, couple minute break. And then um, Guy will come up.